Hey, in this video, I'm going to show you step by step how you can build your own research AI agent inside of NNN. And the best part is that it actually takes less than five minutes to set up. So I'm going to show you exactly how it works, how you can set it up and how you can use it within your automations. So if that sounds like something that you want to learn, let's dive in. All right. So fundamentally, we have an input and we have an output. This is the same exact structure as a normal AI agent. And the input could be research XYZ. Then the AI agent has system prompt or instructions. System prompt just means what is the thing that we tell the AI agent to do? Um, and it can be, hey, research this, or if this happens, then call this or do something else. And the output would be the actual research. Now between the input and the output, the AI agent now it's hooked up to OpenAI, which is basically a chat GPT, and that's its brain. That's how it thinks. And then for its tools, because tools are like the things that the AI agent calls, that it sends the request to, when it wants to get something back, well, in this case, we're using perplexity. Because perplexity is the research LLM. LLM stands for large language model. It's like ChatGPT, Claude, they're all LLMs. And this right here is specifically done for research. So I can go to perplexity here. I can show you that this uh, LLM is like ChatGPT. It looks like it, but it's known for research. So I can say, find the latest news on AI. What this will do is that it will get sources. It will start getting all the sources. And it's known for because it's really good at finding research. And it gives you the full breakdown of everything, even giving you all the sources that it used for that specific research, which is insane because it does research over 20, 30, 40 research papers, all within seconds to give you an answer, something that ChatGPT could do, but isn't meant or prompted to do. And so that's what we're going to use to connect to the AI agent in order to do the research. And again, we're doing it automatically. So we're using the API version, just like we're using the API version for OpenAI. So we're just creating an AI agent that is hooked up to perplexity to do research, and then we get the output. So if I go to NNN, I can go to NNN workflows. All right, so I'm currently in NNN. I can go to create a workflow. As you can see, we have two options. And if you want to watch the video of me building it with AI, check it up here. But we're going to press add first step. We can go to agent. Just press agent. And this is how you add an AI agent in NNN. So this is where we start configuring things. And so we're sending the chat here. This will then send a signal to the AI agent. If I go inside, I can see that the user message, which is what is the thing that's going inside the AI agent, it will be the chat input which I'll show you exactly what it looks like. And then after the user message, we can add an option. We can have a system message. The system message is the instructions, this part right here. And so that's what we add here. We can say you're a helpful intelligent assistant that does research. I'm going to give it a better prompt later, but for now we can leave it at this. And now, as we mentioned before, we have the chat model, which is what is the brain of this LLM? In this case, it can be OpenAI, which is the one right here. And I can connect OpenAI to my account. The way to do that is to go to platform.openai.com. I can go to dashboard. I can go to API keys. And the API key is sort of like a password that says to an NNN, hey, you feel free to use my API key for my account in OpenAI. And top right, create a new secret key and name it. So it can be NNN. You can create a new secret key, leave everything as is, no restrictions. And now you have this key that you can paste within NNN and name it. I can name it Michele. 15th of October. I can save it. And now I have my account connected. Bear in mind that this is not free. So you have to go to here, to profile, to billing and add money here. $5 is more than enough because it, it's only taking one tenth of a cent, right? So it's fine. All right. Now that we have this done, we have this connected. We can choose 4.1 mini. This is basically the brain again, how it actually thinks. And now we can connect it to a tool. Now we also have a memory here and the memory is usually used when we are using the AI agent sort of like a chatbot like this. We want it to remember the previous conversation or the previous answer or question that we gave it as context for the next steps. Well, in this case, uh, we can add it. So we'll go here, I can put simple memory and we have context window length, which is how many past interactions does the model receive as context. We can leave five, that's fine. And now for the fun part is perplexity. So this is how we actually do the research. So I can go to perplexity, you can go to perplexity tool right here. We're just talking to the API of perplexity and generating um, responses with citations. I can go in here and we get introduced to this. Now you will not get introduced to this because you will not have an account. All you have to do is press create a new credential and now you need an API key. So all you have to do is go to perplexity.ai up here and you want to make an account. Once you make an account, you can go down to account. You can go to API and I believe that you have API keys on the left hand side right here. You can accept terms and generate a key. I can do NNN research agent test. I can create a key. 
I can now copy it and paste it here. I can say Michele, 15th of October. Put it here, there you go. And press save. And now you should be able to see it here and you have successfully connected N10 to Perplexity. But as we mentioned before, just like OpenAI, this is not free. So you have to go to API billing. So you would have to buy credits. I think I put $5 on a few months ago and I still have it, $4.17. So it's very, very cheap. And once you have this, now you can actually use the API. For tool description, we can set automatically. Operation, which is what is the action that we're doing is messaging a model. And you can do custom API call. But in this case, messaging model just says, hey, I'm going to automatically go into perplexity. I'm going to automatically type something and get an answer back. And now we have the different models. I'm going to go to perplexity API models to see the difference of each one. There you go, models. So here we have all the models and we have the search models, which are inherently the models that you just use uh, to retrieve information, just like a general searching model, which is the one that we're going to use. We have reasoning, so more for multi-step tasks and research. So this is really for conducting in-depth research. The only thing about this is that it does take a lot longer than uh, something like Sonar or Sonar Pro. So we're just going to use Sonar in this case. I'm going to try both actually. Um, but let's start with Sonar and then we can put it there. We can go inside and now I can change the model to again Sonar. We can use Sonar Pro as well. And now we have the user prompt. So the user prompt is what is the thing that we're giving perplexity? So the sort of input, right? That it uses when it's doing the research. So in this case, if we press this button right here, what this will now do is it will let the model define this parameter. So the AI agent is smart enough so that it decides what goes into perplexity for it to actually do the research for and then giving us the output. So I'm gonna press this and we can leave everything as is. All right, now we have this, I can test it. So I can go here, open chat, and I can say, what is the latest news on why 95% of AI products fail? I can press go. What they should now do is it will talk to the uh, perplexity tool and it will talk back to the open AI to structure the output for us to get it back on the chat. So we can see we have the research here, which is in-depth research. So you can see it's pretty good research compared to something like ChatGPT. The key reasons why 95% of AI products fail, poor data quality, lack of business alignment, execution, cost privacy, hype versus hard work. Uh, and then the 5% of AI projects that succeed typically is X, Y, Z. So we get a full report or a full answer researched, right? Which is actually pretty good. This is the thing that Perplexity is giving us back, right? Which is the responses. We can see the prompt tokens, uh, the amount that it took us. So 0 0.006, which is very, very cost effective. And in citations, so the citations that it uses, it actually goes to YouTube videos, which is interesting. Who is this? Let's see. The AI bubble, why 95% of AI products fail, 1.1 million, it's cool. Um, and we have more search results, right? Which we can then use as citations or as more evidence as well. And the content is, what is the actual message back that it gives to the user? With all the citations, you can see 247 obviously refers to um, citation two, citation four, citation seven. So that's pretty much how you can set up an AI agent uh, that can do research. Now I'm gonna apply this to a business use case. So let's say we had a business which had a form on the website, which you're gonna make. And the form on the website asked someone to add the website, right? So they say, hey, what's your name? What's your email? What's your phone number? And what's your website, right? And so what this does is that it takes the details from someone putting out the form on the website, and then it uses perplexity to do the research on that website before giving us an answer that we can add to our CRM. So let's build it. This right here is gonna be um, the same because it's pretty much standard. Uh, I'm gonna change the prompts a little bit, but apart from that, it's fine. And I can do on form submission because we're making a form. And this will be the first step in this case. I can go inside and I can put a name for the form, which is website form. By the way, don't worry about these. Test URL is just a URL that we use when you're testing. Production, we use when we set the automation to active. Authentication is if you want to put a password, but we don't want to. Uh, we have the title and this is, please fill out the form with your details. Then we can add form element, which is saying, hey, what are the questions? In this case, we can ask them, actually full name. Yeah. And we can say company name. We can say uh, company website, which is the thing that we'll actually use. I believe that it has date checkboxes. No, nah. or oh, email only. Um, and that's it, right? We can just ask three different questions. Of course, a company would probably want to know what is your budget? What are you looking to, to do and so on? But these are three simple questions. So I can execute step and I can say, Michele Torti, company name is JM Solutions. My website is jmsolutions.com. Submit, 
This should now send a signal here with the details that we can then use for the next steps. So I can pin the information, which means that now I don't have to rerun it again every single time that I want to run the automation. And now the only thing that goes into this is not the chat input because we're not chatting to it anymore. What we're doing is we can define the user message below. And again, user message is the thing that we actually give to the AI agent every single time that is different. In this case, it will be the company website. And what we can do is actually do company website, company name actually, and then company website, company name. There we go here, company name. And there you go. Company name and company website is the thing that goes into the AI agent for it to use when making research of that company. So I'm gonna say, you are a helpful assistant that helps to do research on new companies that come through. You can say that, right? Assistant, account. yeah, you can say that. Uh, and then let's say uh, for rules, so I'm gonna say we are, or actually the, the research that we are looking for from the company should contain target audience and let's do offer. So we want to know the offer of the company and target audience. That's it. I believe this should work. Uh, let's see if it doesn't. If it doesn't, we'll change the prompt. And now this will be the same. Yeah, this will be the same. Let's test this out. Let's go here. Oh, actually, no. Yeah, we can't use a simple memory because the simple memory only works when we are using a chat model. So when we chat into it like a chatbot. But in this case, we're not doing it. So we're just using um, these two. Let me press go, execute workflow. You see how I didn't have to fill out the form every single time. Now it's doing research. And then at the end, it gives us James Solution targets SMBs looking to improve operational efficiency through innovative workflow automation solutions, XYZ. Cool. Which now we can add to our CRM. So I can just make a new Google Sheet. I can name it, say CRM, new website leads. I can say company name, a full name. Oh, there you go, full name. Company name. Let me zoom in so you can see here. Go X. I can do company website and research. I can make this black, white, bold, and freeze up to row one. I'm going to go like this. I can still see it. Cool. And now I have to connect Google Sheets to Anyten. And to do that, I can go here. I can press plus. I can go to Google Sheets. I can then append a row in a sheet. Append just means you're adding a row into a sheet. Connect your account by going here, just press sign in with Google, which will take you to this page. You can press your account that you are connected with. And once you're connected, you can go to sheet within a document, append a row, because that is the action that we're taking. The document would be CRM new website leads. The sheet will be sheet one. Yep. And then the values to send. So this is saying, hey, what do we want to add here? here, here, and here, every single time that it runs. We would like to add the full name, which you can get on the left-hand side on the form, the full name, company name, company website, research, and something more that we wanna add is submission date. So submission date. Because we ideally want to know exactly what date and time they submitted the form. This now refreshes because it saw that I changed something within the sheet. I can then add submitted at right here. But the problem is that if I go, if I press this to go full screen, this right here is very messy. And so what I want to do here is actually format it so it's readable to a normal human who has no clue what T01, all of this stuff is. So what I can do is I can go in here and I can put dot to date format, I believe. And I can say, what is it? Format date, format. Yeah, okay, cool. Let me go into the formatting guide so I can see how to make a date look normal. God, this is horrible. Let me see here. August 6th, 2014. This will be DD. All I have to do here is just put DD. There we go, 16th of October, 2025. And this will be the format that we add the date inside of the Google Sheet. So now I can pin this data which means that I don't have to rerun this again. I can just press go. What this should now do is she would send the information here to the Google Sheet. Michaela, GM Solutions with the website, with the research, which is very long. Let me make this a bit bigger. Or not. 
go here. So you can then read about offer and who they're targeting and submission date as well. So they get to know exactly when to submit it to the form. And there, there is a use case that you can use the research AI agent for to do research on someone when they come through from the website or some sort of input from somewhere else. And we built this type of system for a company before, uh, a bit more extensive, so a bit more stuff. Um, but it did research on new leads that came through the website. And then it looked at their social media, it looked at their website, it looked at everything that they had to then give it to the sales reps, right, in their CRM before the sales reps actually called the lead, right? Because they had more information, they were more prepared um, before actually going out and selling to customers. And if you want to learn AI automations from zero, but you have no clue where to start, well, check out the first link down below, which will take you to my free school community. You can go to the AI Automations 101 course, which is a comprehensive course that takes you from a real beginner in AI automation to someone who's actually able to build automations for themselves and for other businesses. Plus, if you go to the templates vault, you can see all the resources from every YouTube video that I've done before that you can import into your own account. And I'll also show you how to do that as well right here. And if you want to dive deeper into NNN AI agents, then check out this video up here, right? Go through the AI agents fundamentals 101. With that being said, I hope you found value from this video and I'll see you in the next one.